without us noticing, modern life has been taken over. As we search for love, shop online, travel the world. Even as we save lives, there are step-by-step -step instructions working quietly behind the scenes. More and more, they're ruling our lives. They're called algorithms. Algorithms are everywhere. These bite-sized chunks of maths have become central to our daily lives. But because they're invisible, we tend to take them for granted, even misunderstand them. What is the most efficient way to sort a million 32-bit integers? <laughs> they're the secret to our digital world and so much more. In this program, I'm going to show you some of my favorite algorithms to reveal where they came from. Algorithms are ancient. How they work. The challenge is to find the shortest route. These are the rough instructions that you would use. For returning to your starting point. What they might be able to do in the future. The algorithm's kind of writing itself or? Uh... Absolutely. And how we can't live without them. Even when we're baking a cake, we're following an algorithm. As a mathematician, I love algorithms. Not only are they impressive problem solvers, but they're also strangely beautiful, tapping into the mathematical order that underpins how the universe works. Welcome to the weird and wonderful world of algorithms. Most of us carry one of these around. Now, you might have noticed that when you take a photo with your phone... I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. 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 Okay. It's all for you. We tend to associate algorithms with computers, smartphones and the internet. But they're not exclusive to the world of technology. My day job is Professor of Mathematics at Oxford University. And one of the things I enjoy most is keeping the students on their toes. Three. Okay, I'll say one. Here we're playing a mathematical game with a jar full of chocolates and one red hot chilli. The aim is not to be left with the chilli at the end. But what these students don't know is that I'm playing it with the help of an algorithm. Uh, okay, you ready? Okay, I'm going to go first. So remember, you can take one, two or three chocolates at a time. I'm not a greedy guy, so I'll just take one. Now, your turn. Each player takes on their turn between one and three chocolates. So you've taken two, OK. So um, I'm going to take... I'll take two. Whatever my opponent does, my algorithm tells me how to respond. OK, um, I'll take two. And your turn again. <laughs> oh, yeah. So I take three. Three, and I'll take one. And uh, just so wait, a chili is that left. Me? Yeah, so you have to eat oh, the chili. No. <laughs> so there you go. Let me reveal how the algorithm I was using helped me win. The only way to learn. <laughs> so the key is to think about grouping things in fours. Thirteen chocolates divides into three groups of four with one left over. So by taking one chocolate in the first round and then four minus whatever the other player takes in the subsequent rounds, this algorithm ensures that the other player is always left with the chili. The essence of a really good algorithm, it's magic if you like, is mathematics. The best algorithms are those that tap into the underlying mathematical structure hiding beneath a problem. Okay, pop the chili back. I'll be introducing you to some of the algorithms that have become the beating heart of modern life. Lots of types of algorithms have been created with the computer in mind. And some of the most important are sorting algorithms. Now the job of a sorting algorithm is to put things in order and they have lots of uses. For example, on the internet, Information gets broken down into packets of data, which then gets sent across the web. Now, to reassemble that data, sorting algorithms are absolutely crucial to putting this data back in the correct order so that we can view the picture or read the email we've just been sent.
This is the System Development Corporation in California. It's considered to be the world's first computer software company. And it was here in 1963 that two computer scientists first formally wrote down one of the most iconic sorting algorithms of all time. It's called bubble sort. And here's an example of bubble sort in action, sorting blocks instead of numbers. It gets its name because with each round of the algorithm, the largest unsorted object bubbles to the top. Like all our algorithms so far, there's method in the madness. To see how this algorithm works, we're going to use it to sort eight objects. Now the bubble sort algorithm says to consider the objects in pairs and swap them over if they're in the wrong order. So we're going to start at this end here and work our way to the top. So I consider these two, they're in the wrong order, so I swap them over. Consider the next pair, they're in the right order, so I leave them as they are. Consider this pair, they're in the wrong order, so I swap them. And we just continue doing this. Now the bubble sort algorithm says to go back to the beginning and repeat the process over and over again until the objects are in order. The algorithm stops when there are no pairs to swap around. So the bubble sort algorithm has successfully done its job. I've now got the objects perfectly ordered according to ascending height. Bubble sort is elegantly simple and straightforward. But if the scale of the sorting task is huge, say organizing vast swathes of data, then there might be better sorting algorithms for the job. This is John von Neumann the scientific genius who helped pioneer the modern computer, game theory, the atomic bomb, and, as it turns out, invented a sorting algorithm. He devised it to work on this, one of the world's earliest electronic computers, which he'd helped design. The algorithm is called Merge Sort. The Merge Sort algorithm works on a principle of divide and conquer and it consists of two parts. The first bit is the dividing part. This involves splitting everything into smaller groups. And now comes the conquering bit. The groups are now merged back together. But as I merge the two groups, I compare the sizes of the objects one pair at a time so that the merged group becomes sorted. Now the merge sort algorithm might look rather similar to the bubble sort, but where it comes into its own is that with a larger number of objects, it's much, much faster. So let's see how merge sort compares in speed to bubble sort. It's time for a battle of the algorithms. Here we've got bubble sort on the bottom and merge sort on the top and we've got them sorting a thousand objects. Now although they'll both produce the same end result, you can already see merge sort is getting there much faster. And this difference in performance gets more pronounced the more objects they're asked to sort. <laughs> What is the most efficient way to sort a million 32-bit integers? <laughs> well, uh... I'm, I'm, maybe, I, I, I'm sorry, maybe... No, no, should, no, 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 I, 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 I think... That's not a... That's I, I, not a I, I think, uh, I think the, uh, the bubble sort would be the wrong way to go. <laughs> uh, Come on, who told him this?
Merge Sort beats Bubble Sort hands down for sorting large amounts of data. But in the crazy world of algorithms, there are many, many different ways to sort. At the last count, there were over 20 different types of sorting algorithms. All weirdly achieving the same result, but by different means. So there's a bubble sort, there's merge sort. Insertion sort. There's heap sort, there's quick sort. Tim sort. You get gnome sort. There's um, pigeonhole sort, which is also called radix sort. There's bogo sort, which might never finish. A travelling salesman travels door to door, city to city, selling anything from brushes and hoovers to double glazing. It sounds like a straightforward job. But all travelling salesmen face the same question. What's the shortest route to take? So important is this problem that the Clay Mathematics Institute has offered a million dollars for whoever can find an efficient algorithm or prove that none exists. The travelling salesman problem goes like this. Imagine you're a salesman and you've got to visit a list of cities represented by the red dots. The challenge is to find the shortest route so you visit each city once before returning to your starting point. Now you might imagine the best thing is to just consider all the routes, like this. The method of checking all possibilities is a type of algorithm. And for three cities, it works fine because there are only three possible routes to check. But what if we add two more cities to the list? With five cities, there are 60 different possible routes. And if we add another city, then there are 360 possible routes. And for 10 cities, there are over 1.8 million possible routes. If our algorithm chugged through them, checking all of these at a rate of 10 per second, it would take two days before it found the shortest. So you can see a method of trying all the different possibilities, a kind of brute force algorithm, if you like, is just simply impractical. So if somebody found a fast algorithm for the traveling salesman problem, that would be hugely significant. If one of my students came up with an efficient algorithm for the traveling salesman problem, I would get him to explain it to me. I would kill him, and then I'd go and claim the clay prize, a million dollars. But I think my students are safe. The problem crops up in lots of areas. From soldering circuit boards, to planning the routes for supermarket deliveries. But has the travelling salesman problem secretly already been solved? A team of scientists working at Rothamsted Research in Harpenden have turned to nature to see if it has found the answer. They're carrying out an elaborate experiment to study how the travelling salesman problem is tackled by the bumblebee. Bees have to forage for nectar in order to provision their hive. Um, and so they have to visit possibly hundreds of flowers on each trip. What they want to do is find an efficient way to go between all these flowers that they visit. The humble bumblebee faces its own travelling salesman problem. The flowers are just like the cities. And the bee is the travelling salesman. One bee will go out foraging uh, many, many times every day. So over the course of a day, it really helps to, to take the most efficient possible route. So what we're doing is trying to figure out exactly what rules they're using to, to narrow down the possibilities. Joe has laid out five feeders, which play the role of flowers. Each feeder has just enough nectar to ensure the bee has to visit all five to give it a full honey stomach. How are you actually uh, knowing where it's going? 
For this, we're using a harmonic radar. So as that spins round and round, it's emitting a radar signal. And we've attached a small antenna to the back of the bee, which then reflects the signal from the radar. And so this allows us to see exactly where the bee has gone as she moves around the field. So how does the bumblebee tackle the travelling salesman problem? OK, okay switching it on now. With five feeders, there are a total of 60 possible routes. The shortest is around the outer edge. This heat map shows the path taken by a single bee. At first, it's simply discovering the positions of the feeders. Then, the bee appears to methodically change different parts of the route to see if it can make it shorter. Within 20 trips, it's honed in on an efficient route. This route is not always the absolute shortest, but for the bee, it's good enough. That's amazing that just after a very few tries, they've got to something which is, is efficient enough for them to, to do their foraging. Yes, that's right. They can't spend days or even, you know, it could take months or years to try every possibility. So they have to very quickly find a route that they can do again and again and again in order yeah. to efficiently provide food. Fantastic. I think the bees become my favourite insect now. So it's obviously a mathematician at heart. Absolutely. Let's be clear, bees are not about to be awarded a million dollars. They've not miraculously solved the travelling salesman problem because they don't always find the shortest route. But their algorithm is a clever approach. In maths, it's known as heuristics. Algorithms that are efficient, that don't find the perfect solution, but get as close as they can. The Open University have produced a free pack for you to learn, create, and discover more about digital technology, past and present. To order your copy, phone 0300 303 0553 or follow the link below to the Open University. Coming up next tonight, a flash of inspiration may change your life or just your lunch. And how does it come about? Horizon Investigates here on BBC4 next. <laughs>